fundamentals of geology today we're going to discuss principles or laws of geology there are multiple laws or principles that lay the foundation for geoscience so we're going to talk about few of them today and we will discuss the rest in a different video the fundamental principle of geology is usually associated with relative dating in modern day geology we no longer accept the concept of catastrophism that means the earth was formed in a one single event instead today we know that the earth and its geology has been evolving over a long period of time to understand this we use something called relative dating which is as old as the geology itself the relative dating is based on the following principles principle of uniformitarianism law of superposition principle of original horizontality principle of lateral continuity principle of cross cutting relationships principle of fossil or faunal succession principle of intrusive relationships and law of included fragments today i'm going to go over the first few uh, principles which includes the principle of uniformitarianism law of superposition principle of original horizontality principle of lateral continuity and the principle of cross cutting relationships to start the principle of uniformitarianism was introduced by james hutton through a book that he published titled theory of the earth in 1788 in his book he introduced the principle of uniformitarianism itself in hutton's words the past history of our globe must be explained by what can be seen today or what is happening today in other words present is the key to the past this also means that earth is older than what it was thought to be before james hutton this is the first time that anyone had proven effectively that geological processes occurred millions of years ago is still occurring today later charles lyell brought a uh, publication uh, it's a three part volume called principle of geology between 1830 and 1833 in that theory he not only popularized the james hutton's idea of uniformitarianism but he also said the principle of uniformitarianism extend to physical chemical and biological processes so it's not just happening to geological processes but it also can be observed in other areas of science and the book is notable or unique uh for this time because this is the first time uh one of the first times that the term evolution was used in a scientific publication later scientists such as john playfair and geologist sir james hall used empirical evidence to prove that the uniformitarianism concept is valid and can be used as a foundation for modern geology the principle of uniformitarianism also known as doctrine of uniformity and this is the most fundamental principle of all fields of modern day geoscience and sometimes in other branches of science the key idea here is that present is the key to the past like i mentioned which pretty much means that the geological processes observed in modern day in other words geological processes in operation today that modify the earth's crust have worked in the same much the same way over geologic period of time here's a picture of actual alberta that i took in 2012 and it shows a um, section of uh, geologic material based on the principle of uniformitarianism we know whatever the strata 
uh, in here around this area is older than the strata up here because even though it is tilted right now at the time of deposition this strata must have been formed the similar way that we see formation of strata uh, in modern day. In modern day we see strata form on top of each other so it must have formed on top of each other because the same geological process is happening today happen in the old days. And this also supports the concept of a slow gradual processes interrupted by occasional natural catastrophic events such as volcanic eruptions and earthquakes. This would be catastrophic event or tsunamis for example. And as I mentioned before these processes we observe modern day is very similar to what happened in the past. In other words, the reverse, stratigraphic succession, biological processes, etc., etc., ex happening today is exactly the same processes or similar processes that happened millions of years ago. Here's a picture of stromatolites uh, from Banff, Alberta. And you can see the, in this fossilized sample, these mounds are formed by cyanobacteria. So this similar process you can actually observe also in Shark Bay, Western Australia. The same pro cyanobacteria that op in operation today that form these materials in Shark Bay, Western Australia is a similar cyanobacteria that produce this ancient fossilized sample. So you could actually look at this as these are, this is the ancestors to this. So cyanobacteria is basically a type of microorganism that create layers of um, you know layers of mounds like this and I will talk about this in a later video but the basic idea here is that what you found today in Canada as fossilized samples is a similar sample that you get in modern day in Shark Bay, Western Australia. So this is, these are actually fossilized, these are living in this situation. The next principle we're going to learn today is the law of superposition or principle of superposition. The principle of superposition was first introduced by the Danish scientist uh, named uh, Nicholas Steno. And in his 1669 publication, Steno uh, also introduced several other principles of stratigraphy such as principle of original horizontality, principle of lateral continuity and principle of cross-cutting relationships. We will talk about those principles later in this video. But after uh, Steno introduced this, pr these principles, William Smith popularized the idea of law of superposition through his publication called Smith's Law. And that's William Smith and that's uh, Steno. So the law of superposition uh, can be summarized um, based on what Nicholas Steno published. Uh, it is also known as the principle of superposition. In his publication, he wrote, at the time when any given stratum was being formed, all the matter resting upon it was fluid and therefore at the time when the lower stratum was being formed none of the upper strata existed. In other words younger strata or younger um, formations deposit on top of all the formations. I created this model using visible geology I will leave a link in the description so you can see that if you look at this as a type of rock or type of um, strata and if you look at each of these colors as different types of strata the yellow layer has to be deposited first before the blue or the orange or others get deposited so this yellow layer have deposited first and older than let's say this green layer so obviously the orange layer going to be older than the green layer However, 
younger than the yellow layer. So all of these depositions, the yellow would be the oldest and the green gonna be the youngest or this red one gonna be the youngest. In other words, younger strata always deposit on top of the older strata. Even when there is a folding and other type of events, in this fold, for example, you can see this plunging fold have different layers. Obviously, this blue layer gonna be much older than this purple layer because it is sitting on top of this blue layer. So you can have multiple geologic event, but the fundamental principle of superposition still stands. So the other principle, the next principle we're gonna talk about called the principle of original horizontality. And it was also introduced by the Nicholas Steno. In his paper, uh, he gave the idea that uh, the concept that the strata either perpendicular to the horizon or inclined to the horizon were at one time parallel to the horizon. In other words, that the formation of layers or deposition of layers are horizontal across the board everywhere in every direction but based on this principle we can also conclude that the earth has been evolving over a period of time this is because what deposition you know while deposition may occur horizontally the folding and thrusting of data uh, sorry strata due to plate tectonics will result in complex geological features such as anticlines synclines things like that or folded uh, or faulted uh, um, strata so we know that earth is evolving while the principle of horizontal horizontality which means that the deposition may uh, will occur across the uh, all dire across all direction the exactly the same time the same layer will form across the board this is not always going to happen but the fundamental principle you have to remember still remain the same and still valid but however uh, there are some cases like draping on pre-existing angle surfaces sand dunes etc uh, etc et and we will learn about sand dunes uh, and angle of repose uh, in a later different video but the fundamental principle of original horizontality is still valid everything get deposited horizontal. The next principle called the principle of lateral continuity. Just like the other two principles, it was also introduced by the same scientists. And uh, the idea behind this is that the material forming any stratum were continuous over the surface of the earth unless some other solid body stood in the way. In other words, just like the previous principle of the original horizontality, in this principle it says that while everything get deposited horizontal to the surface, I mean horizontal, they also continuous in every direction. For example, some kind of event here took this portion out. Could be an erosional event. So continue strata being eroded away like eroded erosion will take this part away but as a geologist if you see the same formation here on the other side of this valley this must have been formed at the same time as a continuous layer same goes to the layer below and same goes to the next layer as well so if you take samples from here and it's same and then these samples are different but then you find the same sample up here this must have been a continuous layer so that's the basic idea of, of principle of lateral continuity. It's continuous laterally. The next principle called the principle of cross-cutting relationships. It also introduced by the same scientist, Nicholas Steno. It state if a body of or discontinuity cut across a stratum, it must have formed after that stratum was formed. In other words, older strata is penetrated by younger strata. 
if the layers were formed such as due to folding or um, cut by a river, those changes come after the layers were deposited. So I made this diagram using visible geology app. Again, I will leave a link in the description. Take the time and tell me which event took place in the order of occurrence, oldest to youngest. So these are different layers of rocks. This is a dike, which is an igneous event, intrusion. And this is also a dike, an igneous intrusion. And this is a fault. You can pause the video and think about this if you like. And I'm going to give you the answer in a few seconds. So, if you look at this, you will see that all the strata were deposited first. Because you see the green and the pink and the yellow and purple, all these layers have been deposited first. Before this normal fault, before this dike and before that dike. We know this be because these layers have these dikes have been cutting across all these layers. You can see that those layers are being cut across by the dike. This fault also cut across these layers. So therefore layers has to deposit first. Then the dike in black cut across the strata. You can see it cut across this strata. Unfortunately, it didn't cut across this thing on this side, but you can see them cutting across up here. And you can see them cutting across on this side. Then this normal fault occurred. And you know the normal fault happened before that brown, the second dike came along because this normal fault did not offset this dike. This dike is going straight through, but this dike has been offset. So this dike came before the normal fault. This dike came after the normal fault. So that's the basic idea. It's, it's events relative to each other. And it's called the cross-cutting relationships. So these are some pictures from 2012 field school. Just like we learn all the principles uh, before, such as, such as principles of horizontality, principle of superposition, law of superposition, you know, principle of original, uh, you know, um, the cross-cutting relationships. You can see these layers of rocks are formed on top of each other. So this layer must be younger than this layer, for example. This layer must be older than this layer, for example. And you've seen this uh, picture before, this photograph before. And like I mentioned before, this has to be older than this, even though it is tilted now. Doesn't matter it's tilted, unless it get overturned. In that case, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. But for now, only thing you need to remember, whatever the layers on the bottom has to be older than the top. We will t I will talk about how tilting and trusting and how other events may happen in a later video, but basically the idea is here, like idea here is that, you know, the older layers are on the bottom. And next time we will talk about the principle of fossil or faunal succession, principle of intrusive relationships in detail. We talk about this a little bit like igneous dikes. Uh, but also we'll talk about the law of included fragments. And thank you for watching this video. You can learn more on sanuja.com. You can also go to uh, this place to check your knowledge. Maybe after the end of this lecture series, there are other geological exams available on here. If you have any questions, feel free to contact and please subscribe because if you want to learn more, Stay in touch. Thank you so much. Have a nice day.